This is what the finished IFP tool is going to look like. It's basically not much more than an inflator needle and a set screw. The set screw is an 8 gauge, 32 thread per inch set screw. This one is 3 eighths of an inch long. Some of the others I've built were half inch long. I wouldn't go any longer than a half inch um, just because it's too hard to drill through it and anything smaller than 3 eighths of an inch can get hard to handle. To bore the initial hole through the set screw, we're going to take a 5 64th drill bit and insert it into the press upside down. Lower it down to your drill press vise. Clamp the bit into the drill press vise. At this point, you would secure the vise to the base of the drill press. I've already done that. Loosen up the chuck, slowly raise it back up off of the bit. It's important you don't let the chuck fly up, it'll knock everything out of alignment if you do. Next we take our set screw and insert it into the drill press. You don't want to over tighten the set screw in there. If you do, you'll damage the threads of the set screw. If it's too loose, the set screw is going to spin around when we drill it out. Next we're going to drill a 3 32nd inch hole halfway through the set screw starting from the top. The previous hole we put in was all the way through the set screw. This one's going to go about halfway. I've already set up the bit and the vise just like we did for the previous step. So I'm going to put the set screw back into the drill chuck upside down so that we're drilling from the top of the set screw. Remember, we want to drill only about halfway through. There's our larger bore about halfway through the set screw. This is the inflator needle we're going to use. In addition to the hole at the very tip of the needle, there's also a small hole on the side of the needle. We're going to make a cut with a Dremel just below or above that hole on the tip side. it is. We're going to clean off the tip. I'm going to use a small brass brush and some sandpaper. 400 grit and then I'm going to follow it up with 600 grit. Maybe something a little finer than that. Here's the tip of the inflator needle after I've cleaned it up. I also took the 600 grit paper and rub the edge of it a little bit just so there'd be nothing to catch as we press fit it into the set screw here in a minute.
We're ready to assemble the IFP tool. We're going to take the set screw and put a nut about halfway up the set screw. Like so. Take our IFP needle. We're going to spread some epoxy uh, just above the notch on the IFP needle. Okay. Now we're going to put the set screw onto the end of the inflator needle. taking a, an aluminum washer, or actually an aluminum bushing, putting it on the end of the nut, opening up our vise, and we're going to slowly press fit the needle into the set screw. We want the needle to stick out about six millimeters from the end of the set screw, so we're going to take it out frequently and take a, uh, check it against a uh, ruler. It doesn't have to be exact, but the closer to six millimeters, the better the luck I've had. We've got it set up right, take a Q-tip or a piece of paper towel and clean off the extra epoxy off the top of it. Move the nut. And sit it off to the side to dry. To deflate the IFP chamber, we're going to insert the tool into the port and tighten it down until we hear the air escaping. Under normal circumstances, you would have suspension fluid coming out of the IFP tool. So make sure you wear eye protection and cover it up with some type of a cloth or a paper towel as you tighten it down to keep it from spraying in the face. To reinflate the IFP chamber, we're going to insert the IFP tool just like we did during the deflate process. We'll connect our high pressure pump to the tool and inflate the chamber to 150 psi as called for in the service guide. One main difference between the do-it-yourself tool and the actual Fox tool is that our tool does not have a valve core in it. So in the service guide it shows the person disconnecting the pump and then later disconnecting the tool. If you do that you're going to let all the air back out of the IFP chamber. So what we will do is we will spin the entire assembly off at once. There we go.